Hey everyone, I just wanted to hop on here and talk a little bit about um, May, which is Pelvic Pain Awareness Month. Many of you may know that for the past year and how many months now, four months, five months now, um, since January of 2019, I have been in treatment for um, vaginismus, pelvic floor dysfunction, pelvic pain, um, and all the things that come along with that. And I have a slight bit of PCOS that can contribute. Um, but I just wanted to get on here and talk. I was gonna just do a post, which I still will do. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what it's been like for the past year. Um, so this problem I've had um, internally in my body has been something that has um, lingered since I was about 12 years old, 12, 13 years old. Um, I've known something was wrong since about that time. Um, I'm a survivor of sexual trauma. Um, I was sexually assaulted when I was 12 years old and I knew um, something had happened during that um, that impacted my body. And so fast forward to many years of pain, um, trying to process the, the aftermath of trauma, going through a trial, um, you know, just dealing with everything that goes along with that, um, self-injury cutting and, um, restricting my eating, just trying to gain back control, and um, kind of underlying after all that was kind of dealt with and healed. I healed in amazing ways um, through the support that I had around me and um, the different counselors that I had and therapists and school personnel who just kind of stepped up and handled me with care. Um, but, you know, going into my adolescent and teen years, I really struggled with um, intimacy and relationships as most survivors of sexual violence do, but I knew the struggle was more than just a surface level struggle, that um, I knew it had to do with more than just the story that I bear. Um, it had to do with a physical uh, thing that I was so afraid to face. And um, so uh, when I was 17, I'm just kind of going to go through it, um, you know, not every single detail, but when I was 17, I went to the gynecologist for the first time. Uh, I wanted to care about my body. That was kind of the um, turning point for my healing, and I wanted to care about my body and pay attention to it. So I tried to just go to the gynecologist just to get things checked out, make sure I was good, and um, I tried to voice what I knew was going on or that something something was going on but I wasn't able to really put it into words because I didn't know what it was and the doctor that I saw was really nice she was um, my mom's gynecologist at the time and uh, she tried but she couldn't really break through to what was going on for me and I didn't really have the voice to tell her and so um, even though I had found my voice in so many other ways um, this part of my journey was still silenced and so I um, at that appointment went horribly. Um, I got on the table, put my feet in the stirrups and had a full blown panic attack. I couldn't do it. And, um, you know, they even had to like take my keys. I was so anxious and, um, trying to get me to calm down and just be safe enough to drive. And, um, so I left there. Um, she did mention that she could kind of tell that I potentially, cause she did attempt a, um, a well woman exam, um, but she could tell that there was something going on. Um, she did mention the word vaginismus, but I didn't know what that meant and I was not ready to hear it. Um, so I had gone home and Googled it. She had given me a prescription for vaginal dilators and I, um, I wanted nothing to do with those. So um, I did attempt a couple times. Um, many years of pain with even trying to insert a tampon was kind of looming over me and I knew it was impossible for me at that time to even face this journey so I, I swore I'd never tell anyone again and that I would learn the hard way later on I guess and um, so fast forward to 2016 um, many of you may or may not know just from what I've shared on here um, that I was in a plane crash and in that plane crash I obtained I survived obviously <laughs> um, I obtained a uh, pretty significant abdominal and back injury and um, you know thankfully I was spared my life but I had a couple injuries that um, were kind of deep within um, thankfully they weren't aren't worse than they were um, and I'm pretty much healed you know a couple years later but I um, it, that's what it took for me to face this um, and I really believe it was the healing hand of God that was showing me that um, you know, because I was in PT for my back for like two years and I could only get a certain amount of healing and, um, 
you know, there was a point where I just couldn't heal anymore. The PTs were like, we can't really do much more. And so um, I finally got the courage to go back to my primary care doctor who I had just been in contact with through the plane crash. Um, I found her during that time and she just happened to specialize in gynecology as well. And so toward the end of my um, follow-ups uh, for the plane crash with her, I got the courage to tell her, like, I think I want you to look into something else and I know something's going on in my body that's not right. So I did that um, for six months. Um, we attempted a gyneco gynecology exam, well woman exam, pap smear, all that, and I went through a series of like put, almost passing out, getting sick, um, feeling horrible, um, even with like something as small as a pinky or a Q-tip. And um, she then diagnosed me again. <laughs> um, and, and that's when I had that memory of what that doctor said. Um, I, did, I kind of blocked it out. Um, years earlier but she told me I had vaginismus and that um, the muscles in my pelvic floor were spasming involuntarily anytime there was any type of insertion and so um, what I you know that could be a tampon or anything else and um, intimacy was so far away from my purview because I knew something was very wrong and so I, I shied away from intimate relationships and I went through many years of pain trying to force tampons and um, it was heartbreaking because I felt like different from everyone in the world, every every other woman, every other teenager. Um, and so uh, facing this head on, um, you know, led me to go see a specialist in Boston, which led me um, back to my primary care to be referred to um, pelvic PT. Um, so I have been in pelvic floor physical therapy for since January of 2019. So for a year, um, January, a year and five months, actually. Um, and it has been the most difficult, healing, heartbreaking, um, beautiful, uh, amazing, uh, painful process. Um, it can be all those things at once I've learned and um, my pelvic floor physical therapist, Beth, if you're watching this, um, and Bay State Physical Therapy, I am completely indebted to you for um, giving me my body back and helping me heal as a woman that I am today. I'm 28, um, so it's been over uh, 16 years since I was sexually abused and um, sexually assaulted, and um, this has been many years of pain for me, but I believe that I was put in this place for purpose to share with other women that they're not alone, that if um, you believe something's going on in your body that it's okay to speak up and it's okay to deal with it when you're ready. Um, I think when I was 17 I wanted that healing so bad but I wasn't ready and um, I think really uh, you know my faith really brought me to where I am. I did not have faith at that time when I was 17 so I think um, the shame had a stronghold over me still and so I think you know stepping into this healing journey when I was ready was crucial and um, giving myself grace along the way it hasn't been easy um, it hasn't been pretty sometimes and um, I've had vasovagal symptoms um, I felt that nausea the deep pelvic ache all that that goes along with it but I've also felt deep deep healing so I just wanted to give hope to everyone out there um, walking this journey through pelvic pain. Um, it May is Pelvic Pain Awareness Month, so I wanted to kind of put a face and voice on the issue. And just to be light in the darkness, this journey can be very dark and very isolating um, because it's really hard to talk about your most intimate parts with people, um, even for someone who does that for a living. Um, you know, not for a living, but I do publicly speak about my um, story through sexual trauma and faith, and I'm very open with my journey, but this part just felt so untouchable. And so I'm really trying to be that face and voice, to do it afraid, as my friend Nicole Bromley would say, and just to kind of step out into the light and just let you know that this happened to me too and that you're not alone so I hope every woman out there who's faced any type of pelvic pain knows that you're not alone your story matters no matter how you got to where you are on your story and that healing is possible hope is possible possibility is possible I thought an intimate relationship was impossible and off the table for me because I I knew this piece was going to be heavy and um, I recently have entered a relationship who um, he is just so good about all of this, and it's more than I could have ever asked for. So I just want to let you know that you're not alone, and um, pelvic pain is not an easy journey, 
but you don't have to do it alone. So my inbox is always open and just sending love and support to you all. Um, again, May is Pelvic Pain Awareness Month and I just wanted to be a face and voice. So I hope you all um, are staying safe and um, staying positive and remember the sun will always come up tomorrow.